my quest to find out more about the SS Great Britain's homecoming has taken me from Bristol Harbour site to here, a private jet en route to the Bahamas. I'm here to meet Sir Jack Haywood. He may have lived on Grand Bahama for over half a century, but this entrepreneur is famous for giving millions to patriotic British causes. Yeah, thanks Rob. for uh, meeting me today. And for everything. He's even nicknamed Union Jack. Over a cup of English breakfast tea, he described how he heard of the SS Great Britain's plight. It was after uh, uh, buying Lundy and giving Lundy to the National Trust, to the, the country, to the, the England, um, that um, uh, David Owen was one of the three MPs involved in saving Lundy, helping to save Lundy. And uh, at a dinner at the House of Commons, uh, he mentioned the Great Britain. Did I know about the Great Britain? So yes, I heard the ship. Did I know she was foundering in the Falkland Islands and could be rescued? And I said, wow, great thing. And he said, would you be interested? I said, yeah, a ship of that name, I certainly would. One of those first early campaigners wrote uh, an account of his first ever meeting with you, where he said, you turn up, had a quick chat, and you said pretty much straight away, yeah, I'll show you the money. I said, I'll see the ship home. And he said, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, you know, <laughs> I'll pay for it to come home, as long as it doesn't exceed your estimate, if it exceeds your estimate. But anyway, we we'd hit on the fact it'd be about £150,000, which was worth a lot more then in those days. And uh, so we parted company, and uh, he writes in his book that he couldn't sleep that night. There must have been a few scary moments when the SS Great Britain was on those high seas, back those treacherous waves. A big wave, if it were to come over, could have knocked her off. She's never to be seen again, and you've lost all your money. It was a gamble, and it was, it was obviously worth taking, and uh, if we failed, we failed. But instead, success. Perhaps this moment would never have happened without Sir Jack Hayward's money. He's since ploughed in over a million pounds more to the SS Great Britain's restoration. This interview from a 1980 documentary showed he was in it for the long term. I make a promise, you and I will be here 10 years on to see her completed. Oh, I'll be 67. <laughs> I, I won't tell you what I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as old as Great Britain. <laughs> yeah, I see. Right, I'd love to be here. And on the 50th anniversary too. Where does the SS Great Britain come in, in terms of achievement? Oh, way up, way up. I mean, as I say, Lundy and the Great Britain have been two great successes. They were the right thing to do. Uh, it, it were the popular choices. I don't think anyone was against either of them being saved, except I think a lot of people said the Great Britain was a waste of money, that hulk and what would become of it and so on, which we proved them wrong. Sir Jack Hayward showed me around. When I first arrived here in July 1956, it was just a, a construction camp down at the what is now the harbour. He made most of his money turning Grand Bahama from a barely inhabited swampland into a major tourist destination and port. He knows about ships and is delighted at how the SS Great Britain looks today. To see her recreated, uh, both outside and inside, as to what she was, it, it, it's a miracle. It's a, a result of a lot, a lot of hard work. And Sir Jack Hayward has worked hard, giving to many causes, usually with a patriotic British flavour. But why? Because I'm British. I mean, they call me Union Jack, don't they, or they used to. You know, I, I got this name, which I should be modest and say, oh, you know, but I actually love it. But no, Union Jack. And it needs doing. I mean, if no one else is going to do it, someone has to. Sir Jack Hayward won't be at next week's 40th anniversary. He spends most afternoons at work at the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Union Jack, with the Queen smiling down from his office wall. He believes this feat of daring rescue couldn't happen these days with our modern rules, regulations and health and safety laws. He says bringing the SS Great Britain home was a one-off. Maybe he is too. Roberts Murphy on Grand Bahama for the West Country tonight.